All right, this is chapter three of The Night Singer. Three. There were no empty parking spaces outside the station, so Hannah left her car across the road by the Griffin Shopping Center. The drive home from the island had taken her only 30 minutes. The Kalmar police station was clad in dark wood and pale stone, and she could see what looked like two large fingerprints carved into the wall. Hannah stepped inside and told the young man behind reception who she was and who she had come to meet. The, second t the seconds ticked away and Hannah didn't know where to look. The different shades of gray stone on the floor seemed to blend together and she felt a strong urge to get up and run. Everything would be different now that she could no longer hide away in her new house in Kelva. Her job would force her to interact with people and some of them wouldn't be particularly happy that she was back. Hannah tried to breathe through her nerves. She knew there had been no other choice, that moving back to the island had been a question of survival for her. Her eyes came to rest on the receptionist, who flashed her an encouraging smile, as though that would be enough to convince her everything would be fine. The door opened, and though it had been 16 years since Hannah had last seen old Ove Holtmark. She recognized him immediately. His hair was grayer and his stomach rounder, but his body language and gaze were the same. He was still the officer who wanted to be everyone's friend. His eyes were now framed by a pair of round black glasses, but otherwise his style hadn't changed at all. Jeans and a pale blue shirt. For a moment, she was worried she, he was about to hug her, but instead he held out a hand. Hino, welcome. It's great to have you here. She took her his hand and nodded, couldn't bring herself to speak. She followed Ove up the stairs to his office. The last time they sat face to face was in an interview room at the police station. That building now housed the custody cells plus a number of fast food places. They had spoken in one of the more comfortable interview rooms, Hannah on her red sofa and Ove in a chair. And she could still remember word for word what Ove had said to her. First, he had asked her how she was doing, and when she said she was fine, he told her he had told her they had evidence that there was no doubt about it. Her father was guilty, as though he had wanted to punch holes in the wood she had used that that she was fine. Ove slouched back in his chair and clasped his hands over his stomach. Hannah noticed the hair on his knuckles. During that first interview, he had leaned into her, picking her apart with his gaze. His body language was more relaxed now, though his eyes still seemed intense. He spent a few minutes talking about the job and her moving back to the island, but then he rocked forward slightly. Forgive me for asking, he said, but I can't help myself. Why did you join the force? Hannah wasn't sure she knew the answer herself. For a long time, she had nurtured the belief that something had gone catastrophically wrong, that she would become a police officer in order to reinvestigate the crime and bring everything that had been missed or misinterpreted to light. But she wasn't so naive as to think that it wasn't also partly a result of denial. She simply didn't want her father to have done the things they claimed. To understand, I think she said, and have you understood? Hannah hesitated. She didn't know quite how honest she could be. There's not much to understand, really, she said. People end up in that kind of situation for so many reasons, not just because of cold, hard scheming, desperation, circumstance, bad luck. And I really do think I can help them. I guess that's why I'm good at getting them to talk them. She meant the criminals, of course, the perpetrators, though most of all she wanted to help those around them, their relatives, the victims. Yes, your superior in Stockholm said you were a highly skilled interrogator, Ove told her. He seemed satisfied with her answer. Hannah would rather not think about her father right now. She had assumed things would be easier once he was released, but they had actually gotten worse. She had been to see him in the old house three times in the village where no one but his friend Gunner welcome, wanted him. Gunner was the only person who hadn't abandoned Lars when he took to the bottle, and it was Gunner who had looked after the house while he was locked up. Seeing him that way had been so painful, apparent in free fall. He hadn't been able to neglect himself like that while he was inside. Still, without a word, Hannah had stopped visiting him. She had called and written to him from time to time, increasingly sporadically, but he had almost never replied. The guilt was possibly the worst part, the knowledge that she hadn't managed to save him. No, she had barely even tried. Your boss has lots of good things to say about you, actually, 
of continued and I'm sure you're going to do a great job here but before we go through to meet the rest of the team I'm wondering how you'd like us to handle your background what do you mean well given your surname people will wonder maybe it's just as well to shine a spotlight on the elephant so to speak Panic made Hannah's heart race. Did O really want to introduce her as Lars Dunker's daughter? She tried to swallow, but her throat was dry. Instead, she forced out the words as though she actually believed them. No, it doesn't matter who my dad was. O leaned forward and studied her, making her feel 19 again. Are you sure? He eventually asked. 